Hi, it's Tim Clark, End Times Matrix News, coming at you live today on this Wednesday, April Fool's Day. And the things that we're going to present today are not April Fool's, even though they may sound like it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a process today. Chris made a nice video the other day, and we're going to call this show De Decoding Symbolism with CERN. And um, uh, we're going to get into... Uh, adding this on to the that video that we decoded yesterday for additional in-depth um, information. So we have a lot of decoding going on right now for several different shows that we could be doing. And uh, basically today we're going to just uh, go through that video first of that material. And then I have a few things to add on at the end um, that, of course, have popped up in front of me today. And I thought I would share those with you. So we'll go ahead to Chris, and we'll have her start a presentation. And I'm going to highlight her uh, so she can get going with her screen there. Okay. Here we go. Yay. So this is the video that I did yesterday, um, and this has to do with the new TV series, Dig, which has a lot of, of occultic symbolism with uh, the symbol, and it's, so, it's tied to so many different paths, but we're going to try to stay focused on, um, on the symbolism connected together with CERN and the ancient history. So this is the dig series and this was the symbol on her back and I watched a video and I noticed that one of the CERN buildings has a symbol that looks just like that. <laughs> That's kind of obvious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so what I did was I, I looked up all these symbols to find out what they mean and I have uh, for the last couple of years looked at different letters and the meanings and they a combination of meanings in different languages and I think that's why God uh, scrambled up all the people at the Tower of Babel's languages so that way they wouldn't have the knowledge that they had when they were building that tower at the time. But these are the symbols. Uh, this is a gateway like the cube that's open and here's the Ta cross. This is tied to uh, Hiram, Hiram Abiff and Tubal Cain and the eight deities of the Ogdod. And this is the dualism also. All of this is tied together. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, the two the two ball cane that the uh, Freemasons use is kind of obvious when you take the cap off of there that uh, it's the two ball cane. Um, very interesting. What did the square represent again at the top That that uh, to you, that square portion above the towel cross? Well, it's the house of the Antichrist. It's the cube, and it's open, and it represents a dimension, and also it was on the Egyptian uh, temples, which I believe, like, you know, Nimrod was tied to Ham, and he was a pharaoh in uh, Egypt as well. So this has to do with uh, the portal that they opened up during that time. The pyramids are like a portal, and CERN is like a pyramid as well. So um, this symbolism is really tied all together. I just find it quite interesting how this matches so well with <laughs> with this building. I, it's amazing. Yes, uh, I've been watching this series, just so people know. I guess this week is uh, uh, episode five. It will be the tomorrow of a ten-episode run. I don't necessarily recommend, uh, if you want to do research and watch it, it's fine, but they're pushing a lot of uh, uh, satanic agenda as far as the homosexuality and everything else in this. And uh, The point is it's Hollywood, and Hollywood's pushing their own. This is their Luciferian awakening show to the uh, building of the third temple in Jerusalem. Okay, So they're waking up the regular people. Um, through this show, and just like uh, Bill O'Reilly's doing his Jesus m movies, Killing Jesus, and they're, the Downies are doing their other show, 
about Christianity, this the Catholic push going on here, uh, and I just want to bring that out that there these things coming out about Jerusalem is this is going to be mostly Kabbalistic Jewish the Dig Show about building the Third Temple, and the other two shows are going to be Catholic versions of, of uh, <clears throat> talking about Jesus to bring people up to speed. Eventually, the Catholic thing is going to take you into Chrislam, but we won't get into that today. Yeah, um, there's so many. I mean, we could go on for years talking about all of the pathways but mm -hmm. um, of the connections, but it all boils down to one thing, and that's the uh, opening the gate, the New World Order, bringing in the Antichrist. It's tied into the Book of Revelation. Um, and so I wanted to show this tall cross. This is the focus. This is the worship of the eight, and I want to get more into that and try to get this uh, tied in to the Mithraism and the worship of Jupiter, the resurrected Saturn, and show how all of this is really focal pointed uh, to this cross that they worship. And it's tied in with the Dejed pillar and the neck of Osiris, uh, putting him back together, if you know the story of Osiris and Set, and the dualism. So Set and Osiris represent Janus and the sun and the moon. And this represents 9-11, too, with the uh, two towers coming into one pillar. And we'll talk about that, too, more in a minute. But this right here is the Alpha and the Omega, the Taw and the Alif. We've done a show on that before. And this represents a plowshare. That's the word that it comes up to. But also, the Alif and the Taw does not only represent the Alpha and the Omega, in Italian, it's these two letters here. It's this exact same thing. In German, it means die. And so there's so many, I mean, there's hundreds of different translations just to the symbolism right here. So here's in Egyptian, this is the house estate, the home of, and it's pretty much like an open cube in a dimension. Here's the Y in Egyptian and the uh, duality. Um, in Hebrew, it's the uh, the Ta or the Vav, the six, and it means dualism. And we're going to still do another show on Janus and show how this piece of the puzzle fits in um, really largely with CERN and the Higgs boson and the gluons and the spark in the pyramid and opening the portal. It's a big piece to that. I've been researching this for a long time and this was the most complicated uh, piece to try to understand uh, in the um, in history, in ancient history with the Book of the Dead and, and the resurrection and how all these de deities play into the planets and who they are and what the story is in the cosmos. It's like a big clock in the sky and how does this fit in with today's time? And the symbolism is there with today's time and a lot of dates, too. This is another uh, symbol. This is the Black Bull of Osiris. This is another uh, pictures from the uh, TV series. Here's another picture. Could you get anything out of that previous picture about the 666? Uh, I saw in there the six, two sixes on all those listings. But I was looking for the third six, and I didn't see it necessarily. Which one? This one? That one. Uh, the three times five is one five, which is a six, and the one five is a six. Um, I was just trying to find the other six, and I hadn't been able to locate it yet on there. But uh, somebody, I'm sure, will see it and point it out to us. Yeah, well, three, six, nine. 5, 10, 15 are the scales of justice, and that's okay. tied with ISIS, too. So we'll get but, into yeah, that. We'll get into yeah, that. There's, there's so much uh, symbolism in these occults. With uh, Matthew Nicholson does a great breakdown on new numbers tied with Saturn, and wow. it's just pheno phenomenal stuff. He, 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 he really Matthew, hooks it up. He hooks it up. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't know Matthew Nicholson and his Saturn videos on YouTube, you got to check those out. It is just unbelievable. Is he just true? did one on on NASA with JPL and dates. It's just uh, crazy, and he ties it into the book uh, of Revelation. It's just 
pretty oh, yeah. wild. I was just laughing along with him because it was just ridiculous. It's just it's totally ridiculous. These uh, NASA rituals. Go ahead. Okay. Well, here's another picture from the Dig TV series, and here's their numbers that they have here. Notice they circle the four. This is a very important number. It's a gate. Uh, four does mean uh, a gate. Um, this is eleven, eleven, and fourteen is thirty-six. Six plus three is nine, and there's your three six nine. Three six nine is very important numbers. They are the three eyes, and it has to do with the third eye, the carbon seven, the open and the portal, and uh, DNA. And so here's the next numbers. They equal to 23, and it's tied into chromosomes and the Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. And the next numbers are 13, and that has to do with the fusion of the 13 pillar. So, um, and then here's the 11 minus 7, 4. 4 mirrors 6 in Roman numerals. It's a number of a man. Is this the missing 4 in the 444? Four, four, four? And that's kind of what I've been focusing on is that. Uh, number four and the three six nine. So here's uh, Nikola Tesla, and he talks about the magnificent of three six and nine, and um, he explains here uh, these frequencies because frequencies have a lot to do with it. I think that when we get in another discussion with Anthony tomorrow, yeah. I want to yeah. talk about this uh, spark in the middle when the when the um, Exactly. When it when the when it when the um, particles uh, cross over and there's this mm -hmm. spark, mm -hmm. I want to get into that with the frequencies and everything, which is quite interesting. Yeah, the uh, frequencies is what I got really excited about this week, uh, as you could tell. <laughs> yeah, I, I was absolutely just blown away with the frequencies, and I went, "This is ridiculous," uh, because if you understand what it means. Uh, you understand what has been happening over the past century. Uh, and, of course, we want Anthony to comment on that, so we'll just hold off until then. Yeah, there's so much to go over, especially, you know, with this big show we've been working on with Janice. Mm -hmm. And here is, if you watch I Pet Goat, um, there is a reference on the wall. After Callie's demon spirit leaves Obama in the video... Um, there's a re reference to Psalm 23 that has to do with the chalice, and this is Orion's belt. It mm -hmm. represents the brain, and um, and so this is tied into the 23rd and um, Kali because Kali also represents Isis, and she is the part of the deity of Amon and Jupiter, which is the resurrected Saturn, and so. It's just so much deep symbolism, but once mm -hmm. you understand all the pieces, it really makes a lot of sense. It takes a long time, I think, to kind of uh, digest a lot of this stuff in our minds and try to understand uh, the truth and understand these things, which is important to me. I like to understand what they're doing and the truth and so how the they deceive people. Right, so the Belt of Orion is also connected to the 9-11 site, and it's also connected to Egypt, right? So Right, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So if we see Janice here in the Y, these are the two pillars that represent the fusing of DNA. They have the new One World Tower, which is 1,776 feet tall with the um, antenna, and... So this is the 13th pillar. Anytime, all over the world, during the Golden Age, there are statues, and they all have, they're holding two things in their hands, and they're three, and, the, and they are representing themselves as their own God and the 13th pillar. So this is kind of the same thing, uh, fusing the Y, the IXXI is the gate. Um, they don't have the, the, uh, the, the seventh Zayan letter yet. This is part of the open and the portal and the Antichrist. So they are actually um, in just part of that right now, which I'll try to explain more in depth. But here's part of the video of birthing into Cali here on the IPEC goat. It's a very deep symbolic 
video. This clock strikes 12. From what I understand, a lot of researchers are saying that we're in the 11th hour. This is the 12th hour whenever they're, they're showing a, a nuclear explosion with all the nuclear dust going off in uh, New York City in this video. And what's very interesting is that if you see the ready video, it, you have to look for it, but that same exact picture is in that video as well. And these are two occultist videos that the elite put out. But um, here is the lotus flower. We know that um, Callie's mourned from a pink lotus, and she is part of the deity. She's like a split deity with Shiva, and which represents a lot of different uh, people, which I'll show here. She is Asherah in the Bible, the consort of El. She's Isis, Astarte, Diana, Hecate, the three-headed uh, uh, deity that's kind of like uh, Janus, and that's connected together. Um, Kali, Inanna, Demeter, uh, Aphrodite, and Asheroth is like another uh, way that the Hebrews, they have that spelled that way. But it's just interesting that this video, I think, kind of ties together with this dig series uh, symbolism as well. So Callie does all her dances and everything, and they show the birthing of the Antichrist and the false Jesus coming out on the boat of Ra at the end. And then you see Scorpio in the sky, if you haven't seen that video, and I pick go, but... These are some of the, this is Tanea, this is Mari, this is Inanna's name, this is Neth as Isis, and this is Juno. Juno is part of uh, Baphomet, and that's just uh, something else that we need to work on so, and go into. So do you think uh, Rihanna has anything to do with Inanna? <laughs> 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 it could be, you know, the entertainment center uh, industry right. is very cultic, and it's, you know, yeah. you can just tell by their symbols. But um, this is the birthing of the Antichrist symbol. This is uh, Ori Osiris's phallus. This it also represents Orion's belt. It's a very deep study on that. Uh, this is Yanni, and so. If you look at, you know, like the Hindus and they have the Yanni and uh, the sex magic that happens in the middle of the wheel in the sky, this is uh, part of a lot of different worships all over the world through Mithraism and uh, it all ties into Jupiter worship. So Here the, is, is the uh, Yanni, is that also connected to the Queen of Heaven? Yeah, they're all the same uh, thing. Okay. So this, she's wearing the phallus hat. Here's the phallus, and this is how they worship here. They have these there, and they do their worship and their sim symbolism. Uh, this so, is the box on the back of her head. She's tied to uh, Ptah in Egypt, and this is her as uh, the owl symbol. And these so are the shin rings in her hands. So we can see where the pornography industry comes from. Oh yeah, it's definitely, this is it. This is a very uh, sex magical cult, occult mm -hmm. and and it's it, it's very deep and it's very hidden and they've hidden these things for so many years and I think now that we have the internet and you know, there's a lot of false information out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know everything but once you start putting the pieces together and they make sense, uh, it's quite interesting. One of the, the most important things that I think that I'm looking out for that's very interesting is uh, CERN starting up September 24. This is the same day the Pope addresses Congress. September 9th uh, adds up to 369, which combines to the Saturn, Sun, and Moon, the three eyes, and uh, CERN 666, a mirror of 444 in Roman numerals, and uh, do you have that verse handy, Tim, about the frogs? Yeah, are you ready for that one? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we've been discussing because we've been talking Ogdode and, and the, uh, how do you pronounce the other one, the Enead or? The Enead, uh, the Ogdode yeah. and the Enead. The four frogs and the four snakes are, is where it all started in Egypt. 
So we wanted to connect it with a, a reference that a lot of people scratch their heads about in the book of Revelation. It's a uh, book of Revelation, uh, chapter 16, verses 13 through 14, and it says, And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God the Almighty. So that is the reference of verse uh, 13, verse 14 of the Revelation 16, talking about the three unclean spirits as frogs coming out of the dragon, the false prophet, and the beast. It's very interesting. So it's definitely connected to what you're talking about. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, Pope Francis wears the silver and Pope Benedict wears the gold. And so I think Pope Benedict is still working and he's still in charge in a way. Uh, but Pope Francis is his mouthpiece. But, uh, you know, and Pope Benedict is the first person to ever step foot in the in the Muslim temple. And the, it's an eight-sided temple because they worship the eight. CERN is the eight-sided. Uh, you'll start seeing it more and more if you look and understand. Like these, uh, I know that Enter the Stars, he, he does a lot of videos on 888. Well, these fours turns into eight because these um, squares also, when you pull them up, they turn into a pyramid. And the pyramids in Egypt... Uh, represent as above and so below, and they represent the number eight. Mm -hmm. September 24, 2015, as I said, is an important date. Two plus four is six. It mirrors four. 2015 is eight. That equals to 444. Four, four. Is that the missing four? Um, I'm not saying that Obama's the Antichrist. I don't think he is. There might be a very bigger picture of the Antichrist than what we understand but it's very interesting that he is the 44th per, uh, president. We're in the year 2015, which adds up to eight, and we are in the year of the goat. In March, this equinox started. This is the uh, way that the solar boat of Ra traveled during uh, the 12 uh, constellations. It started in March 20th to September the 24th, and this is the autumn equinox. It started then, but it's still, we are going to have it end here. So this is like uh, very interesting, all of these connections with these numbers. And I'm not saying anything's going to happen. I have no idea for sure. But it's just so ironic uh, that these numbers are all fitting together like this on this day, which the CERN, when it starts up, it's going to be very powerful, like 100,000 suns. And, and we know now, with all the research that we've done and with Anthony's uh, wonderful research, that they are trying to open up a portal and, and, um, and bring in the Antichrist. Their symbolism, they have an leaf detector, they have uh, an atlas, uh, this, this, um, the LHC, the Alice, the atlas, all these things are tied together. There's so many characters from ancient history that they use their names for, why would they use those names? Yeah, I also think it's interesting that when we look at dates, I, and I think I'll reference Enter the Stars again, uh, he explained to folks that he uses the Gregorian and the Julian calendar converters that, you know, the Rome has messed up the calendars on purpose. Uh, the traditional Hebrew calendar was a lunar calendar based on 360 days. And then, of course, then you got the Gregorian, which is the papal calendar. And, of course, it throws everything off. But as Enter the Stars was saying, you, when you convert uh, between the two, you start seeing patterns that they're doing stuff on specific uh, Roman holidays and, and feasts and stuff. But they hide them with this messed up calendar that the Gregorian calendar put forward. So it is interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. They do have it hidden very well. And... Um, not many people really have time to look into all this or really understand it. Some people don't care. Uh, I like to know what's going. I like to know what's going on in the world. I like to know where what happened in history. Where did it all start? 
uh, what happened really in the Garden of Eden and uh, and what the kind of days are we in and what does the Bible show about end times and and what times are we in now? I mean, these are important things that people uh, should want to understand according to the Bible and just for the love of Christ and, and the truth. And, um, I mean, back in the old days, there, there were people that were, they understood what days they were in. They knew what the mm -hmm. occults were and they had mm -hmm. battles. And I mean, things were quite different back then than they are uh, today. And there is a hidden agenda and there's a lot of conspiracies that happen to now uh, be coming out to be true. And so we're just living in some interesting times. So it's, it's good to be awake and just to have knowledge at, at all. I mean, and just to keep an open mind and, and kind of um, find the truth in, in your own way. Look up stuff and pray to the Lord. Let the Lord reveal things to you. I could be wrong sometimes, and I admit when I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the Lord is wonderful, and I think that he says he's going to reveal things in the last days. He's revealing so much to so oh, many yeah. people. I've gotten so many emails from people that, uh, you know, yeah. they've had a lot of things revealed to them that's just incredible. So yeah. I think it's fascinating. I mean, if you're not interested in this stuff, then you are truly the sheep, and the Judas goats like Obama will lead you into the FEMA camp so you can get sheared. Uh, that's what's in store for those who aren't interested. That's just saying it straight out, you know. If you're aware, then you fit into the wise virgin part of the Bible that says you got oil in your lamp and you're ready to go when Christ returns. If you're not aware, you don't have oil in your lamp and you're not interested and you got to go through what they call the tribulation time. Uh, so there is a reason to be aware or be interested in these things. Well, it's my our prayer, actually, mm -hmm. that and we pray for people because... Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's not for us, it's for the Lord Jesus Christ's glory, for God's glory, for people to uh, wake up and see the truth. And, I mean, even if it's too late to do anything about a lot of things, it's not too late to pray for people, uh, mm -hmm. to be aware of things. Prayer is very powerful, you know, Absolutely. to pray for, the, pray for the lost and uh, pray, you know, because prayer is what uh, protects people and... Uh, it's a very powerful thing, so that's and definitely the, something we need to to just even to be aware of now. Because if things get bad, okay, so on the dollar bill they put 9/11. There was a lot of predictive programming on 9/11. Uh, Rockefeller's watch said 9/11 when he bought the building. <laughs> There's so many so many predictive programming. Okay, so 9/11 happened, didn't it? And it and it was on the dollar bill showing these two twin dollars bowled up. Okay, well, on the $100 bill, it shows uh, New York City uh, like a big um, flood and a, just, uh, a nuke going down in the ocean, and this is on the $100 bill, and it shows the Liberty Bell and the bell. I guess it's like a uh, showing the bell ringing and waking up. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if they're going to do this predictive program, at least it is just worth uh, trying to... Uh, understand because these elite people they mean business and this is what they did uh, during 9-11 and they hide things they try to make make it look like our government is so wonderful and they have nothing to do with it but there's a lot of whistleblowers there's people that went to prison for that that didn't deserve to uh, that tried to tell the truth and and so you know a lot of people's lives were affected and mm -hmm. we care about those people and the things that, you know, a lot of people died and and uh, to know the truth of the hidden agenda and know the truth of what they're doing, it's so obvious and I think more and more people are waking up and more and more people are understanding uh, what they're doing and how they're causing these wars and yeah. how they're trying to bring in, I mean, it's no secret that they want one world religion, one world um, uh, currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it's no secret that Obamacare is tied to the uh, the one world currency and uh, the RFID. That's not a secret. It's a one world uh, Obamacare. It's not just for the United States. It it may appear that way right now, but we have the Trans Pacific Partnership, and we have all these things coming together right now. We have Ted Cruz running for the North American Union. It seems like. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, <I love> that <laughs> one. so, you know, we have, if you look at the uh, ten kingdoms, one of them is going to be the North American Union. It's not going to just be three. It's going to be added up to one, and that ends up to ten kingdoms in the Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership. So, um, you know, we just have to be on the watch. If nothing happens, wonderful. We can, you know, continue to stay in prayer, but if something happens, at least we know why. At least we know what their agenda is, and we can kind of at least uh, prepare for it a little bit. And the most important thing is to know that Christ is in charge and that we go to him for everything because he is way above and beyond and more powerful than all these things. So that's the key, and that's the thing that, that people should understand the most. Okay, so this is part of the DIG uh, website, and it was so interesting because uh, Tim sent me this link, and it showed all the uh, the secret societies. There's so many of them that they put on there, but these are things that they tried to hide for so many years, and now they're just putting it out. These secret societies are also tied to the United Nations, the Lucis Trust. Uh, this is what they believe, and this is on their website. You can look at at what they believe in the organizations that they're tied to, it has to do with this occult. Yeah, what this is, uh, again, I'm just going to say what the DIG is going to do. They're going to bring you to the point of we want to stop Armageddon is going to be the objective. <clears throat> All these TV shows are about stopping Armageddon, uh, the point of being that they don't have to face judgment in the sense that Revelation is the revealing of Jesus Christ as the king. Uh, that will rule the world justly. These criminals that are running the world right now are trying to avoid that at all costs. So they take the rolling out of Revelation and they try to hijack it as they usually do with most things and steer you to a conclusion to condition the people to lose as many souls as they can by following along in the condition that they're doing. So they're going to give you a lot of this stuff, but they're uh, by the end of this series, they're going to draw the conclusions they reach are going to be interesting. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, here's another one: the Freemasonry. Here's the Elif sign, and here's the pyramid, the eight. Uh, that photo, I just want to add to the A there that you have on the bottom there. Um, I don't have it for a later presentation. I just want you to take a look at that. That's a capital A. If you complete the bottom of that, that looks like a pyramid with the capstone on it. Okay? Yeah. And so this is, I just want you to take note for later when I mention AI, artificial intelligence. A right there, and then the I above in the, in the, in the A. So AI, that picture right there, I didn't have one to present. I just want to use that, give you a, a mention of the AI for later on. Go ahead. Okay, here's who they worship, the eight. Here's the four frogs and the four snakes. They did merge with the Aeneid. Uh, it's quite a long study on uh, Horus and Set and the dualism um, but and merging, you know, upper and lower Egypt. But the symbols of the tall cross, the obelisk, the circle, and the star of Horus, this is their symbols, and this is who... They worship. This is Neth and Isis, and then this is uh, Horus. And their children are the four sons of, of Horus that are tied to the Pleiades. Here are their names of the eight. This is Ha and Hahet. Now, these are one deity. These are one deity. These are one deity, and these are one deity. And so they're male and female. So it makes sense when you see uh, Angelina Jolie uh, becoming a male by taking, you know, removing all her female parts, basically. And it also makes sense when you see Bruce Jenner becoming a woman, uh, that you're seeing the combining of the male-female or the transitioning from the male to the female or the female to the male. Yeah, this has a lot to do with it. There's, you know, a lot more deeper answers mm -hmm. to that with the New World Order and becoming fused as really not being a male or a female but just being your own God basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, so that does have to do with accepting the mark of the beast and what their agenda is this all plays into it that's why we're going to be seeing more and more and more of the uh, 
the duality and the sexes and everything more closer to the end times. Right, so and the, why, why Obama pushes transgender everything. Go ahead. Yeah. So if you look at A N K H, this is Jupiter, and so the, these deities here represent um, so two, four, six, eight. These are one deity. These are one. These are one. These are one. So they represent four, four, but all together they represent eight. But they really represent four but they represent eight. So it's kind of like a hidden cross. So the Ankh represents the Ta cross and the cross of Hiram Abiff and Tubal Cain. And this represents the leaf and the tiller of the ground and the plowshare. And this is what they worship. This is the, the mark, and I'll show it in Mithraism here in a minute. But this is the symbol for the earth. This is Venus. This is the tall cross, uh, Phoenician, and you know regular cross here that they hung Jesus Christ on. But so the cross is their symbol. This is who they worship. It's so important to understand that that is the focal here. As above, so below turns into the pyramid. Two, four, six, eight. So four deities become eight, and they are representative of the Giza pyramid. And this is the dualism here, the upper and lower Egypt, the two um, women, Nebti. And interesting in that museum, Nebti turned around to 90 degrees and another 90 degrees, that's 180 degrees, towards the star Sirius all by herself. If you look up the Nebti statue turns in museum, that's very interesting. It has to do with all of this. So here's another symbol of the tall cross. This is Venus. So whenever um, Saturn was castrated and he was resurrected as Jupiter, I believe that this is when uh, we get the symbol with Venus without the cross on it. It's showing that uh, is what happened. And if you look here, there is a... This is representing the resurrection. This is in the Brooklyn Museum. Here's the the late the two ladies, you know, the vulture. Here here it is as a lion. That's another symbol and another symbol of Sybil and Leo. And so Venus is Isis. She's the resurrected through. Okay, so Osiris was resurrected as Venus, Isis, and Thoth as Horus, and they're connected to Ptah. I know it's very confusing, but here she is on the back of Ptah because they're one deity. As Mari, she has this on the back of her head, and they're in communication with each other through this uh, tuning fork and this system uh, from Saturn back then because they did this type of resurrection. Now, I'm hot tip is Ptah. Uh, it represents as above, so below. Uh, the higher self and the lower self. And here's another symbol of Neth. This is her, her name. And we see the Alif here. She's holding the Ankh and the Bat uh, tuning fork. And here's the Apis bull. We've kind of gone over that in some of the shows. But here again is the eight. This is the primordial egg. Uh, this is what we see uh, Janice uh, connected to the primordial egg and the Higgs boson and the electric um, universe with the powers of Jupiter's bolts and as far as the resurrection of the Antichrist but these are the the connections to the Ogdo. Pata also is Khonsu and Dionysus they're all connected with that uh, bloodline. Interesting you know Tubal Cain is also Ptah, and he was the last on the in the Bible with the bloodline of Cain. So Amon and Mut is Isis and uh, Horus. They they represent uh, Jupiter and Venus, and she is here as the lioness. So the lioness in um, Lower Egypt is married to Ptah. So these two deities are the same as these two deities, and this is actually part of their being. They call it their son, and 
which is the moon. And this is Neth, and these are um, part of her here. This is Cain's wife. She's a, He's the Scorpion King. I put my link below that you can look at. There's some uh, factual links that you can log on showing the names of Sir Cat and Cain, the Scorpion King, with his burial and the burial number and how he's connected to this person here. And she's also the... Um, guard of King Tut's tomb, which is quite interesting. These pictures are from the uh, Brooklyn Museum, and they explain the, in the Brooklyn Museum that this is Jupiter Kunum. He's part of the process of the uh, resurrection of Saturn through Ptah, and this is uh, Sobek. He was Saturn. You see him wearing Amon's hat. If you look at their hats, it helps uh, kind of understand a lot of this, too. And this is Autumn. He represents the Shin Ring, and here's the frogs. They have some type of special anti-gravity. He sits on the pot of gold or the seat of gold, and he has the DJ, the neck, pillar of Osiris, the Ankh, which is the eight, and the tuning fork here. But he holds up the boat of Ra, and these are his children uh, through, through that process again. This is uh, very interesting because the side locks of the four sons of Horus represents uh, part of the Pleiades. And this is Ptah. This is Khufu. He Shaput. And King Tut. These are all connected together through some type of DNA and dem demonic uh, spirit. Here's a Sir Cat again, and she is one of the protectors of King Tut. His name uh, is connected to Amon. Here's uh, Ognaughton as Hatch She Put. If you look at Hatch She Put, there was something very interesting that happened during Ognaughton's time. And after that time was when the exodus of Moses happened and the Ark of the Covenant uh, across the Promised Land on Mount Sinai and something happened in King Tut's tomb. I do think Hat She Put is connected to King Tut for sure. There's something very strange that happened during that time. Because here's Hat She Put with Arsis crook and fell. Only Osiris carries that. She dresses like a man most of the time, and she also was a pharaoh of Egypt. Here she is again with her beard. Uh, she looks just like King Tut and Amon, but this is her. These are her statues. And here is, this is actually King Tut, and so Isis as Sekhmet and Ptah had Nefertum. Well, he represents King Tut, too. He is born from a blue lotus flower. Well, so was King Tut. There was some kind of, some kind of crossing DNA with the bird and the snake. Uh, in Hebrew, it means crossing over. Ibu, Uro, bird, snake. Crossed over these lines, snake together before the ages came to earth. Something happened when they did their crossing on the boat of Ra through the Milky Way. That's why when you see Amon Hotop the third hold these two onks, he's showing that he is crossed over with both bloodlines of DNA. This has to do with JFES's bloodline and Ham's bloodline. Okay. I'm so sorry that I skipped down there and then I was I was actually going to go over this real quick that these are the the tall crosses and the Phoenician cross uh, and here is the tall cross this is Mithraism and their Jupiter church their churches are actually uh, worship of Jupiter and this is the cross that they make on their forehead so they were christened on their right hand or forehead 
with ashes of blood of a bull. It was from a blood of a bull. And so this is their false sun god, Trinity, which is the moon, Isis, sun, Osiris, and the star Venus, Horus, and Saturn, which is the 369. So this cult is a very old cult. And here is a verse from the Bible in Hebrews 10.4. It says, For it is not possible that blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. That's, that's a very good verse. Yeah. Here's another Mithra. He had the, uh, the constellations around him here and the snake. Um, so this is, he was supposed to supposedly born from a rock. He represents the same thing as the Ogdode in a different way, in a different time. Because as Serapis, uh, it's a female and male deity. If you see the two snakes with the uh, people's heads, you can see it in uh, Indonesia. You know, there's different, you know, all over you can see these uh, symbols, you know, being born of a lotus flower and uh, all these things. But this is another symbol here of Mithra and Tubal Cain because he's holding the keys of time and space and then here is the wand of Osiris which matches uh, Hermes wand which is really Apollo's wand his brother that gave it to him and this is the rooster and the pine cone and you see some more uh, Freemasonry tools uh, back here but this represents Mithra with a lion head this represents Mithra um, this also represents Mithra being born from a rock or a primordial egg and I think that's basically just uh, a symbol of what they explain in the ancient times of being born from a primordial egg uh, that has to do with the cosmos and the spirituality of the consciousness of these demons and the powers that they use with these magic squares and numbers in order to connect these to all this because Mithraism, you can connect it to Hades, Demeter, Dionysus, Nimrod, uh, the, all their bloodline, you can tie that, uh, together. That, that picture is uh, being born from a rock. It's interesting because the folks that watched that horrible uh, Noah movie with uh, Russell Crowe saw that the fallen angels or the Nephilim uh, were encased in rock as rock monsters. And that by helping Noah out, which is a crazy thing, uh, they were released from their rock prison. So that, to me, seems connected in some way. Well, um, if you study the ancient uh, Book of the Dead and the Books of Thoth, not the ones that were redone uh, by some of the cults, but mm -hmm. uh, the Emerald Tablets, mm -hmm. all these things, they and, and then in you know ancient Egypt, they explain how. Um, these demons, they do uh, indwell in rocks and stones, and these stones have crystals. They're like live computers. If you look at it from afar and you study these things, they kind of look like computer chips. And so just like Saturn has crystals around its rings, and um, and then, you know, the, the stone of scone, and the queen sits on the stone of scone, and it says... Whoever its master is, when it sits on it, it screams out. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's noted in a lot of texts that a lot of demonic spirits become like part of a tree, mm -hmm. uh, an animal, the right. earth, you know, and, and kind of rocks an, and stuff like kind that. Kind of an animism thing where everything has a spirit. Uh, everything has the spirit of rocks and trees and, you know, all these things. Yeah. yeah, and in the Bible, uh, these demons could convert. I mean, they went into pigs, they went into people, Satan went into Judas. Uh, well, he went inside of him, and so they they can manifest themselves. And what them. about idol worship? What about idols? Idols are made out of rocks and stones and trees and all the carvings. Uh, the first of the Ten Commandments, you'll have no other gods before me, and the next one is graven images which the Catholic yeah. Church just conveniently forgets, but, you know. Yeah, the Druids, they're, they're tall cross, too. You know, that's their symbol. Um, yeah. So Tubal Cain, Hiram Abiff is given a hammer in the form of the tall by Tubal Cain, which is his ancestor, High Ram. 
If you look at Jupiter, he resembles himself as a ram, and the Ammonites, which is Tubal Cain's sister, is an Ammonite. Uh, her name is Nama, and uh, she is tied to all this too. All of this is a very in depth study, but that has to do with a lot of in depth studies of Orion and Orion's belt and the brain. And they really get into that in the occult with the consciousness right. because in the in the Garden of Paradise there was uh, when Satan fell, the trees in the garden there was one tree that was a tree of immortality and there was a tree that was a tree of consciousness and these have to do with DNA because whenever they bowed down to uh, Satan and all those things happened in into the garden which I have a verse here. Uh, in John, 1 John 3.12, it's translated the offspring of the wicked one. Cain is the offspring of the wicked one. I've studied the offspring of the fallen angel offspring and the myth mythology, and they're quite different than, than humans. I mean, the Bible says that Nephilim took human wives. Here's the verse. Genesis 6.4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the Son of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And the Bible also says there were giants in the days before the flood and after the flood. So um, when you translate the Dead Sea Scrolls correctly, now I'm telling you, we're not privy to the truth in, a, in the Bible in a lot of verses, but if you translate them, into the Strongs and you look up the correct translations from the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, the, the correct passage is, and Adam knew his wife Eve, who was pregnant by Samuel, Satan, and she conceived and bare Cain, and he was like the heavenly beings and not like earthly beings. And she said, I've gotten a man from the angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord. And we know there was a lot of angels uh, that were uh, working for God and you know even uh, Samuel Satan was the four-faced angel in the garden the four corners of the earth he was supposed to be part of God's throne and uh, protect the the trees in the garden but he fell and wanted to be God himself and that's why we're in this predicament now until we go to heaven and that's why we have the Bible so we can reference you know all these things um, this is the magic square of the sun, and I've touched on this in a couple of shows, but the 36 tribes of giants in the Bible around the world. These are the 36 tribes of giants. And the 36 is in the 36 deacons of the cosmos. This genetics are all connected together. And it's quite a good study when you study the Bible and you realize that uh, they're... There are 22 individual John uh, mentioned in the Bible and how they connect to the stories in the Bible of King David and, uh, you know, and a lot of different stories in the Bible because Queen Mecca was married to King David and his son and his son. And she was actually uh, a Nephilim's daughter. And I'm not saying David was evil or anything like that. I'm just saying that we have to have an open mind that things in the in the past were quite different than they are today. <laughs> very, very different. But David was one that he was never said to turn his back on God. He was a man after God's own heart. And it's shown uh, throughout the Bible, I think, that the heart is the key to the gate, through the gate of Jesus Christ to heaven not the sun and the moon or the silver and the golden gate and all that stuff. I think Jesus says he's the gate. He is the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. He is the only way to the Father, not all of these other things that are, that are lies. Unfortunately, Solomon built a temple to Moloch, and he used the Ark of the Covenant. He built a temple uh, to a lot of different demons, and he fell into uh, that worship, and that was very unfortunate that he did, but he did. Um, there's people in the Bible that we want to look at as, as heroes, but the truth is we need to just look at Jesus because 
you know, e even though we should understand a lot of stories in the Bible, I just think that what matters is our walk with Christ individually and our personal relationship uh, with Him, but to also understand not to fall in these traps like Solomon did. He was supposedly the wisest man in the world, but he wasn't so wise, was he? <laughs> not if he yeah. fell into the trap of demons. And he has this the, uh, what is it, the face like the sun just did an awesome video showing the talisman of Solomon, which is the star. They say it's the star mm -hmm. of David, but that's, you know, that's not true. So they right. kind of twist things around, but... I think Solomon is a great representation, just like Nebuchadnezzar is the great representation of the Gentile king that comes to understand the, the majesty of Christ after uh, roaming around in the fields uh, as a wild animal. Solomon is also the kind of the Jewish version of the Nebuchadnezzar in the sense that he was handed everything from his father David and he went to be like Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, and then at the end, I think I do think that, of course, with Ecclesiastes is a, a very, um, I enjoy the book because I, I see a penitent uh, man that's been broken in his old age. But he did quite a lot of evil. And uh, God said, you're lucky, Solomon, your dad was David, because I would have taken the throne from you right now. But I'm going to let your kids lose the throne and let you die uh, with the throne. And so uh, he is very much a example of man in his own wisdom becoming his own God. Uh, both him and Nebuchadnezzar, I think, parallel each other, one from the Gentile side and one from the, uh, uh, from the Jewish side, uh, you know. And so, um, and also what you were saying about uh, the, the bloodlines, uh, the, again, this... Everything from Kurzweil to all these guys today are trying to become their own gods. So they're trying to be like Solomon, or they're trying to be like Nebuchadnezzar, which are both dead ends. Um, and uh, the point is you humble yourself before God and uh, understand that God is the creator of all things. He knows how you work best. And it's part of the rebellion of the the angels brought, uh, as, as Chris was saying with Samuel, um, that... Um, you know the that that whole story of the bloodlines and the divergence and what we're dealing with now with this with the wheat and the tares is exactly the same story. Yeah, um, this is the bloodline of Japheth right here, Mutt. She is the wife of Amon, which was Zeus, mother of Khonsu Dionysus. She's the daughter of Cadmus. And he was the founder of Thebes in 3200, and that's where Hatshepsut's uh, temple was. All of that's tied together because here's the bloodline of Japheth in the Bible. Here's his, uh, he's the grandson of Togama, Tar, Togama and uh, that's an important uh, piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And he's the father of Hayek, Haos. These mm -hmm. people are all in the Bible. And in mm -hmm. Armenian records, the official Armenian records say that he that Cadmus is the founder of Thebes in 3200, and that he and Haos uh, was Targama was the father of him, which he was the grandson of Japheth. He was he was the one who killed Bel, and that's in official Armenian records. Yeah, the um, genealogies in the Bible are amazing when you see all the little pieces that are hidden there. Yeah. So um, one thing to keep in mind when we do our next show is that there's a mystery with Khufu and there's also a hat she put mystery, but um, these are upper and lower Egypt. Lower was Khufu with the horse name and upper was Kasakimwe, which is Ham. And that's his name translated in, in uh, Hebrew. In 2690 BC, so he he had the Horus and Set name after the flood. After the flood, mm -hmm. Ham. He was the first one in uh, the stretching of the cord ritual, and this is well documented. Thoth and Seshat, which she wears the Star of Juno, which she's part of Baphomet. Okay, so these two are actually one deity. Uh, Thoth is kind of like a spirit. But um, 
she's known to be the daughter, but also him too. It's very confusing, kind of like Isis was married to her husband and son, and it's very confusing, mm -hmm. all their... <laughs> Yeah, so there's, here's a God, Cadmus. there's a God of confusion out there, and it's not God in heaven. <laughs> it's yeah. the God of this world who likes to confuse everybody. That's why this is sometimes very difficult for people to follow along. Chris has done a great job at trying to um, direct you to how this, this history works with the confusion of the gods and their roles. Yeah, they also tie to when you know who Joseph is in, mm -hmm. as in Egypt, it's very interesting, the 18th dynasty and has she put and the bloodlines. Uh, Kia is from, uh, she's supposedly King Tut's sister too. And his. it's kind of confusing, but she's from Samaria. She, in Ar in uh, Armana records, she was sent to marry one of the kings there. And the Sumerians and the Egyptians traded their royal wives at times and they mixed the bloodlines during that time of, uh, of Akhenaten. And I want you to check this out because, okay, this is the real Akhenaten. He looks just like his wife here. They look exactly alike each other. Right. Here's the real here's the real Akhenaten. Now is this a fake that is just supposed to look like Obama? Because <laughs> this don't look like this doesn't look like him. <laughs> Well, he went to the pyramid, don't you remember? And he says, oh, I, yeah, I, I know these guys. Yeah. So are we enjoying a very, uh, Obama, Akhenat, Barack Akhenaten, uh, PSYOP, or are we, uh, for, for political reasons, to hook him up to Egypt, you know? Uh, what PSYOP is being worked with these creators of Barack Akhenaten? This is Akhenaten. He looks just like Hashiput, and some people say that Hashiput is Akhenaten, and that she is a both a male and a female deity. And here is from her tomb. She looks just like King Tut. That's her, and uh, wearing a beard. And this, is, and she was also on the Sphinx. Uh, Tefnut was the first one, and then she was put on there later. But she has an owl on her tomb. I find that interesting, you know, because Moloch is an is yeah, owl. It's Moloch and it's the Illuminati. It's the same. Uh, when you look at the Capitol Hill layout, you got Moloch right there as the owl, as the Illuminati. Uh, very interesting. So here's Amon, here's Hatshepsut, and here's King Tut. And I just wanted to point that out, that they all uh, look alike. Um, there's a story of uh, the legends of her myth and her birth uh, that Amon, which is Zeus, goes to Amos, and this is before the 18th dynasty uh, when Joseph was part of this dynasty and Tutmos won. And, uh, he, so this is kind of like talking about the birthing of her. So Hatshepsut had some type of special uh, birthing which was tied to Kunum, which he's Jupiter in the Brooklyn Museum and part of that system of the resurrection of Saturn but so in, and she's also tied with the lioness and we know Isis is also the lioness so it's just interesting these connections the 18th dynasty to me is mm -hmm. is the one of the most interesting uh, dynasties that there is and she combined up her in lower Egypt and she was a pharaoh too just like Minis Namar uh, which which I believe is Cain and Osiris, was mm -hmm. the a founder. He combined Upper and Lower Egypt. Well, she did too, and she was the pharaoh of the 18th dynasty too. Yeah, I see a really interesting thing going on. I wrote, a, I wrote an article a couple of years back on Genesis 47, looking like the counterfeit, the New World Order uh, counterfeited Genesis 47, which is the story of Joseph and the typology of Joseph as Jesus and the um, Joseph going to Egypt and Egypt being blessed by Joseph and then them forgetting Joseph and then the Jews coming out of Egypt. Uh, today, it almost looks like they're reversing that. They're kind of like sending uh, where we came out of Egypt and we were free. They're trying to direct us back to Egypt and slavery. Uh, and the wickedness of uh, Egypt, which was always a symbolic of wickedness. So Barakanaten, uh, 
uh, taking us back to Egypt and slavery through lies and deception and taking away our freedom. Um, it's uh, the parallels are amazing to me if you understand the reversal of Joseph's story in Egypt. Go ahead. Oh yeah, and then just like you know, Akhenaten changed the worship and everything there mm -hmm. during that time. Yep. And so, I mean, that's kind of interesting that they make Obama look like him, and that's my mm -hmm. opinion. I don't think that he really does. But could that be because they're trying to really make this? Uh, this well, they're trying to go back to Egypt back. too. They're trying to go back to Egypt. They're rejecting coming out of Egypt. They want the world to reject the coming out of Egypt and and going to the Promised Land. They're rejecting the Promised Land and going back to Egypt. That's New World Order. So if you, these are the magic numbers three, six, nine, twelve of these deities and. Uh, they tie into Mithraism, and um, so this is Ra, Sobek, Hathor, Kunim, and then they turn into 12. So we know there's 12 constellations, and then there's 36 deacons of the cosmos. So if you times three and three uh, deities per each god uh, that manifest them, then that's where you get all these magic squares. It's kind of like, in my opinion, the way I see it is that um, Satan is like one deity and he branches off into all of these other demonic yeah. spirits and they all exactly. work together for this goal uh, exactly. that they're trying to do. But um, I've, almost, I've almost described it as, as uh, you can be a father, you can be a brother, you can be an uncle, you can be a son, uh, you can be a nephew, uh, but you're all the same person. And somehow that's how this kind of works in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Here's uh, King Tut's hat. Sirius wears this hat, um, and he was the king of the four corners of the earth. Thoth wears this same hat, um, and then Amon Zeus wears this hat here. And so it's interesting how they look a lot alike here, but... Um, And here's Moses with the snake on the pole, and he represents Ophosius uh, in that constellation. And this snake represents Ophosius here. And I think this has to do with something with the equinox coming up and the in this constellation here that's the 13th constellation that's been hidden, you know, throughout history too. We only really hear about... 12, but there's really 13. So well, it, makes, our, it, makes, it makes sense, though. 13 is this, the number for rebellion. They want to reject the 12, which was the is a traditional number of a, used in, by God, and they want to reject the 12 and have a, be above the 12. So they go to 13, which is a uh, you know the 13th pillar, the sign of rebellion. Then the 13th pillar is the one that they lifted up in the One World Trade that's 1,776 feet tall. So this is, yeah, the 13th pillar has a lot to do with the symbolism of Janus and Castor and Pollux, which is also, uh, if, you look, if you look up the old constellation of Gemini, the twins, that one's going to be Apollo and one is going to be Hercules. We know that Apollo and Hermes are brothers, but there is a long thing that uh, I can't get into right now, but Tim and I are working on this part of the puzzle oh, of, yeah. the, of the Gemini twins and Janus and how, the, oh, how yeah. it ties together with the portal and the brains. But we have, a picture, we have a picture of the Gemini twins just from last week. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. So... Um, Back to this, I didn't finish this here real quick, but with Tubalcane and his uh, gift from um, Howard Mabiff's gift, and here is an older pick of it that represents a weapon of war. Well, these were giant artifacts from giants, and this is their tall cross. It's a weapon of war. These are real artifacts. It's amazing. And when you, when you were talking about your AI... There in this is. here, yeah, here it is. Here, um, the mark of the beast with a cross, and 
how this ties together. This Saturn, Sun, Moon, three, yeah. six, yeah. nine, three, yeah. six, nine. I forgot that other picture, but to show that this was the eyes of Saturn is three, the Sun, the eye of Horus, and the Moon. The, the moon and the sun are the story of I, the eyes of Horus and Set when Thoth repaired their eyes, and they were the dual um, deity. Sometimes they were one deity, sometimes they were a split deity, but they represent the silver and the gold gate. And that is why uh, it's on the uh, Pope's coat of arms. I don't think I put that picture in this one slide here, but uh, it's on the video there, but the Pope's coat of arm has the two keys, uh, and they are, and he also has the shell of Venus, and the Moor's head, and the bear, which has a lot of significance uh, to, to that, but I think I went over everything I had here, Tim, except this one last picture, that Jesus is the gate, Whoever goes through him will be saved. Not the silver, the golden gate, and the seven fallen angels, and the chakras, and the cosmos, and the planetary system, and whatever they're trying to do uh, with this, uh, this ascension and consciousness and all of these things that are tricks of Satan. Naturally, Jesus tells us in the Bible how to pray, how to live, how to love, and he is the gate to heaven and the truth, and so um, our hope is is that in these end times, people will realize how deceived the world is, and who to call upon, and the, and the true way to be saved, and that the only way is through Jesus Christ. He is the gate to heaven, and our hearts hold the key to that. Okay. So um, I'll close this out, Tim, and then you can um, talk about what you want to talk about. I know that you wanted to share something interesting. I, I just wanted to see if I could present something. Um, just to add on to the end, I'm clicking off your box right now. Okay. And uh, just a quick thing I just noticed today. Uh, I think sometimes I, this is what I bring to the table is some of the what's going on now. Uh, and I just wanted to do a quick uh, show, a, cu a couple quick things uh, of what I was uh, add on to this discussion, uh, just from what's going on today and um, on a, a couple points. So I'm going to just click on my box and highlight it, and then I'm going to do a share, share screen. And this won't be exactly. Let's see. Uh, So I'm going to bring up this. Can you Is see that? Is that that little guy on uh, Spongebob? What's his yeah. name? Yeah, plankton? That, that's Plankton. You're exactly right. Plankton is the one-eye monster. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as you can see there, that is um, the triangle. And it's just basically the 60-degree triangle. And uh, I just wanted to add that the the the... Uh, trinity of the uh, devil's trinity is uh, the father would be the dragon, uh, the son would be the beast, and the or the Holy Spirit would be the false prophet. One of the two. That would be the that would be the opposite trinity. Uh, that's the representation of the six 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 here that I wanted to show with that. The reason I'm showing that is to go to um, this. This is what happened today to me. You know, so I'll just. Bring this up. I'm sorry that it's blurry here, but it's the only picture I could find. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. The six Doritos bags? Mm -hmm. There are six Doritos bags, and it's uh, at Subway. As you walk into Subway, they have a little thing there about Doritos and uh, Avengers Assemble. And unfortunately, it's a little blurry. But the bottom left here is the bag that's being advertised right now. Uh, the bottom left is the Hulk. And it has the Doritos Jack 3D. And it, what's it show you there? It's got a pyramid. <laughs> and 
And I want to show you how many sixes are in this picture there. Now, when you look at the top there with the Doritos going through the, the triangle going through the Doritos, is that triangle is a 666 right there by itself. But if you take the two zeros, they're both uh, in Gamatria, they're 15s. Uh, so that's each zero is a 6. And if you go down to the C that it's touching there, that is an 18. And that's a 666. And if you go below that to the 3D, that's, that's uh, Chris's famous 444. The D, if you go down, is 1, 2, 3, 4. So three fours is your four four four, which is what Chris has been showing you, the uh, mirrored six. Then you go down to the triangle there. That's the six six six, and then you look inside of it. It's got nine little boxes. That's another six. So <laughs> when you when you add up all those sixes, that's a lot of sixes. I'm not going to add them all, but somebody can do it for me. So that this is the promotion they got going now, just to show that even when you get your little sub, you got the six six sixes everywhere. Um, so that's that. And then I wanted to show that this was the Holy Trinity. This is the way the Holy Trinity works with the triangle. Uh, the biblical Trinity, you got the Father, Holy Spirit, and Son. And as you see in the is not, the Son is not the Father, the Father is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Son. Uh, and then it gives you verses there. So the counterfeit trinity operating uh, with the 666s. And let me see, what else did I have here? I wanted to show uh, this aspect. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. The realm of the beast? Yeah. Um, okay, I wanted to look at the far left here with the pyramid. The Babylon, the, the head of gold. Uh, the uh, the pyramid over here, Medo, Persia, Greece, Grecia, Rome. Okay, I've been saying to people, I, and this is from Lou Vegas stuff, uh, and so he has some nice um, things that he said that I, I could use uh, um, in some presentations. Uh, but the main thing with this is to look at the legs here. Okay, we got over here on the far right, we got Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome. Okay. Rome has two legs here. One's a east and west, okay? Uh, the Western Roman Empire was the Vatican in Rome, and the Eastern Empire was in Constantinople, which is Istanbul, which is Turkey. And, of course, we hear lots of stuff about that right now. They got the hurt. Uh, Erdogan is uh, what the showbots are saying is looking like the, um, the Mahdi uh uh, Mahdi, uh, what do you want to say? Um, the Mahdi, basically. He's, he's auditioning for the part, is what they're saying. Uh, you got down here the Pillars of Hercules. You see now, Chris has been talking about that in here with the third, 13th pillar. And I find it interesting that uh, uh, Vega uses uh, the... Um, um, what? Who is this? Um... I'm trying to think of the uh, Leonardo da Vinci's uh, man here uh, with the head up here in Babylon and the arms out here uh, going into uh, the media of Persia and then Greece, then Rome here. I thought this was really creative when he did this. Um, what's my point that I'm coming at here is that uh, we are dealing at the end times here with the legs of Rome and then the miry clay and the iron, uh, which is uh, the ten toes. And I uh, wanted to just go ahead. And um, my take on what we're seeing, uh, we have this, uh, the third Rome he puts up here as Moscow, okay? That Moscow with Putin is going to be operating as the good guys. Uh, if you notice that the United States has been... Uh, the, um, uh, the the new Atlantis, we were used by the Luciferians and the Freemasons through Washington to establish the new Atlantis and go out and pummel the world, uh, as you can see that we did with the Middle East and destabilizing and everything. And then we're going to, of course, be used as a scapegoat. Uh, and then that leaves Russia to be the, uh, the two-headed eagle here. 
uh, to align with the Mahdi and the Muslims here. And uh, what I wanted to just say that the two legs of the Rome, in my opinion, uh, the Roman Empire is uh, Christianity of the Catholic version, and then the other leg is Islam of the, the Islam, uh, and the Mahdi comes out of that. I actually think that the Pope, the false prophet, will root for the Mahdi, will support the Mahdi, which is the Roman Empire supporting itself, and the um, that is what I think is going on here. And of course. America has to fall for the one world government to come into fashion. So the Luciferians are destroying America on purpose, which is we've seen this in the movies from the um, from the uh, last Iron Man movie, um, no, the Captain America movie, the last Captain America movie, where Robert Redford just discusses sometimes to build something new, you need to destroy the old order. And uh, people don't like that. And he's talking, of course, about destroying America. And that's the Hail Hydra stuff. But uh, basically, we're the black hats now. If you notice that America was always a symbol of freedom and uh, opportunity, and now with Obama, we're just lunatic, Luciferian, cross-dressing, transgender, uh, devil-worshipping, Baphomet-worshipping, crazy people. And that's what we look like to the rest of the world. And so when they take out, they move to take out America, then you're eventually going to have this Russian Muslim confederation with the red lines represents the Gog Magog attack against Israel here. So Obama's working to free up Iran over here to have the bomb so that they can be ready, because they know the Iranian, uh, they're ready to attack Israel and wipe it out. This fulfills biblical process prophecy, but it also fulfills the Albert Pike Third World War prophecy that the Masonic Order has used as a counterfeit to get everybody uh, into this region. And uh, that's what I wanted to show today regarding that. And um, Yeah, the, you know, the, he, he, Albert Pike, he was a Freemason, of course they they worship, you know, the higher ups, and mm -hmm. we know who they worship. But um, he did predict that there would be a war between Judaism and Islam at the end times. But also, um, there's some. Oops! Did I, I didn't get out? Did I stop the screen share there? No. I'll stop it. All there right. we go. Okay. okay. Sorry. That's all right. So in. The, there is a lot of information out there that the they the Iranians they want the Ark of the Covenant for mm. their Mahdi and the and also in Judaism they want the Ark of the Covenant too. And I think this is a very important piece of the puzzle uh, for these end times too with the Ark of the Covenant. Well, and I also think that this is why you see the Catholic push with Bill O'Reilly and the Downies pushing all this Jesus stuff because they basically take away, um, they they are preparing for Chrislam, which is Jesus is a sidekick of the Mahdi in, in Muslim uh, eschatology. Uh, so they basically, this is why O'Reilly's always saying Jesus never called himself the Messiah and that he's not the only way to God is what the Pope's been working towards, get everybody on board that these Jesus was just a prophet. One of the, well, that's what Oprah Winfrey says, too. Right, exactly. That there's many ways to God. There's right. You can go through all the religions right. and that there's, there's many ways, and that's just a lie. I mean, we're not supposed to believe man. We're supposed right. to believe Jesus and the Bible and the truth, and thankfully we, we have that right. And, you know, even if they want to build the temple... Even mm -hmm. if they're looking for the Ark of the Covenant, even if they're wanting to do what Solomon did and build a temple to Moloch or whatever they want to do, we are the temple of God right. inside of us. We don't need a, a um, man-made temple because we are the temple of, of Jesus Christ, those that belong to him and accept them as their Savior, which we are in need of the Savior. We're all sinners. Uh, God wants us to repent and... He uh, loves all of us so much more than we can ever imagine. And so when 
we accept him as our savior. We build that relationship with him. And when I go to heaven and I see my God and I, I want to, I want to know him and I want him to be able to look at me and know that I tried to know him as much as I could before I go there uh, to mm -hmm. heaven. It's, it's going to be amazing uh, yeah. when, when that happens one day. And just to understand all of this is, is a hard topic. It's, all of these things that we're discussing and that we're researching, we're, we do this for free. I don't, we don't ask for anything. Um, we're, we're just trying to make sense of a lot of things and a lot of symbolism and, and make sense of what, what is truly going on in the lies because once you realize you've been lied to and once you realize that there is more of an agenda in the world and conspiracy uh, and all of these things are starting to, to be played out as the truth and you see the new world order coming in and wars of, that, that are uh, rumors of wars that are possibly going to begin soon. These are things that you don't want to go at the last minute and try to understand when things are getting chaotic. You want to try to understand things beforehand and try to make sense of these things. So that way, I mean, even if you can't believe it or if there's some things that you have a hard time digesting or going through and there's a lot of pieces that you don't get. I, I didn't get a lot of things for, for a few years. It took me a long time to start realizing a lot of the symbology and, and the spiritual uh, aspect of a lot of things and the connections uh, and how we've been lied to. And, and once you start seeing the truth of the occult and you start seeing, understanding these things, you see it all around you. It's in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry. It's in it's the on music my industry. Bag. It's on my Doritos yeah, it's bag. it's on Tim's Dorito bag. And so it's everywhere. And, I mean, I've had people message me and say, I see it everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's funny because some people don't see it. I had a lady said, I tried to tell my husband, look at these symbols. And he's like, oh, you're just crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. But that's going to happen, and that's okay, because only God can open up our eyes. And, and we pray and, and hope that God opens all of our eyes up in the end times I think there's so many wonderful people out there in the world. I do. I, there's so many, so many wonderful people that love the Lord and so many people that are going to come together in, in these end times. There's going to be a pouring out of the Holy Spirit during these times, and it's going to be wonderful. And just to, to, to have that connection and to be able to, to not be surprised and not understand what's going on if something happens, if the grid goes down or if we go to war or anything happens. It's just good to, to have a heads up just in case because the Bible's real, Revelation's real. Those things will happen at some point. We don't know exactly when, but they will. And uh, just a final point, when I was talking about the ten toes there, I just want people to possibly think of this. When people are talking about Obama as a beast or they're talking about Erdogan as a beast or they're talking about a Greek guy as a beast or they're talking about somebody else, a Prince William, think of it this way. There's, uh, if we go with the 13 Illuminati families and that there will be, probably be ten regions or ten kingdoms, then it, and we know that the occult world has a hierarchy to it. You could have ten avatars that are being prepared to host the ten princes that Satan wants to put in charge of these ten kingdoms. So all these people could play a role in some way with these kingdoms, but we don't really know. <laughs> and so maybe that's the best way to look at it uh, because we'll know at that point that whoever signs the treaty with Israel, that's why. But I just want people to think of it possibly that way. Why do we got so many Antichrist players out there that possibly these guys are going to be playing a role as avatars for a demonic prince of some sort for a region? So I just wanted to throw that out and wrap up with that. And, of course, Chris is going to link this video here with the videos she just made. So as a uh, explanation... Uh, to that shorter video. Right, and I'm also going to get Face Like the Sun's video that they just did uh, that was very good video that I'll uh, also put a link into that too and I also put my blog link of, of Mithracism and the Scorpion King um, few few links 
to look at below too on this video that if you're interested in looking at them. So we'll be back tomorrow with uh, Tony, Anthony Patch, and uh, he's got a really good uh, take on, on the addition to what we've been doing with CERN, uh, and that's going to be really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got so much new information. It's just incredible. But I look forward to that, to the show tomorrow. So everybody tune in tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Eastern time. Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bye, thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a thank good day. Bye-bye.